I'm Anthony Villard and you are watching Elliot Kelly TV. Never lose your passion. If we don't make the right choices today with exercise, nutrition, our mental and emotional health, then we are not going to be in good condition in our latter years. Welcome to another dynamic episode of Elliot Kelly TV. I have my Bahamian sister with me, Dr. Felicia Adley. She is a Bahamian physiotherapist. Our topic today is going to be empowering Black millennial women today for a healthier tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining us on Elliot Kelly TV, Felicia. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate this opportunity. Tell us your story, Felicia. I would say, uh, I'm a Bahamian born and raised physiotherapist, like you said, and I first decided I wanted to be a therapist at the age of 15. And uh, I started my studies at what was then the College of the Bahamas and now University of the Bahamas. And I got my associates and then I transferred uh, to a school in the U.S., Gannon University. And I managed to make it up to, I made it, I got my bachelor's degree and then I was working on my doctorate and then uh, you know the the money dried up the money well dried up and so uh, we, we did the best that we could do um, and I made it up until mm, one, almost one year away from graduation and then I had to drop out of school and come back to the Bahamas and work for four years um, so then I, you know, had the opportunity at the end of the four years, everything aligned, everything fell into place. It just worked out. I had a free place to stay. I had access to vehicles I could drive. Uh, you know, the tuition, you know, showed up. Um, everything, everything happened at the same time. So I was like, I think this is my time. So I was able to go back and complete my studies and then uh, return home and just over a period of time, I, you know, I got a job at one of the major hospitals in the Bahamas at Doctors Hospital. And then I had the opportunity to start going out on my own. And uh, then Adley Physiotherapy uh, was born. So, and here we are today. <laughs> so thank you so much for sharing. What I like about your story is you were able to share your vulnerability as well. A lot of persons see us and they think we had smooth sailing, Felicia, and you were able to share how you actually had to take a step back to make this step forward. So I think that's gonna be our first point from this dialogue today, is that sometimes you do have to take a step back in order for you to kind of, we call it pivot, reset, and, and that's what COVID yes. I mean, a lot of our audience would probably agree and then hit share or like if you agree. This time has been a reset period for so many people, whether they're writing books, starting this project, starting a sewing class, learning a new language, or spending more time with the kids, it's definitely been that opportunity to step back. When you were able to regroup, I think that's fantastic because a lot of times persons give up at that point and you stuck it through, uh, you went the extra mile. So, so kudos to you when you have your practice now, great stuff. What keeps you inspired what keeps me inspired, I think, is uh, understanding that, that it is a journey. And, you know, when I came through that period, uh, that's when I realized that, okay, uh, God has not forgotten about me. I, you know, have the capability to do these things. And with God behind me, I'm really unstoppable. Uh, so, you know, I'm very self-motivated, but I'm very encouraged also by the progress that I've seen over the years. And, you know, you see yourself continue to kind of progress and grow from strength to strength. Um, I'm motivated and excited by the journey itself and trying to enjoy that as I go along and to see who are the people that I can take along with me as I go. So that's what motivates me. Thank you for that segue. You've been paying it forward. You're obviously empowering Black millennial women. Tell us a little bit more about that. 
Yes, so over the years, I have realized that uh, I enjoy working with uh, women, Black women that are in the same age set. Uh, and so, you know, when I work with them, it doesn't really feel like work. It just feels like girls' time or girl talk, you know, just as we're moving through, we're doing our exercises, et cetera, and we're getting to the end goal of the patient goals and we're getting to wellness, but it's just, it was just so much fun. You know, I really enjoyed it. And so uh, I decided to, like you said, in this time really pivot and then really uh, have more of a targeted focus on this particular group that I enjoy working with so much and that uh, they it's say that they enjoy working with me also. So it's been a time when I can really pivot and say, well, okay, this is a group that I really wanna work with. And it's almost like I want, I want them to kind of grow along with me also. So as we're all kind of growing and experiencing these different changes from decade to decade, but we don't want to experience the disease and the disability that persons that are much older that we see them experiencing. But what I realize is that that takes some very specific choices today that we need to make. And if we don't make the right choices today with exercise, nutrition, our mental and emotional health, then we are not going to be in good condition in our latter years. So uh, that's how I you know, decided to move into this particular area of the physiotherapy. Tell us a little bit more about those habits that you're practicing that are contributing to your success and the success of the persons that you mentor. Yes, a lot of it is really, you know, making sure that you're getting in the recommended amount of exercise every week, the right type of exercise for your uh, body type, for your age set, for your uh, level of physical fitness, eating right, definitely taking care of our mental and emotional health as well. You know, that self-care. Uh, many times I think a lot of people just forget about themselves in the equation. And there really has to be some time for you, for each individual as a person to take care of themselves. Like they always say, put the mask on yourself first, right? So you can't help anybody else if you're just a mess. So you have to really be uh, taking care of yourself, making the right choices, where, whether it comes to diet and exercise. Uh, you know, for instance, it's recommended that we have at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise every week. So are we really getting that? You know, and you can really do up to 300 minutes. 150 minutes is just a starting point. But what do you do? How much? when, you know, all of that, I realize can be lost on a lot of people. We know that we need to do something, but maybe we don't know exactly what to do, how to do. So, you know, that's where I come in and where I help persons out to figure out and get a specific and personalized plan to help and carry them forward. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. One of the things that as a coach, um, I come across quite often is persons are all fired up when they join programs. You know, they're all excited, when, whether it's the nutrition or the gym or the training or the, the getting up at 5 a.m. But, you know, um, early on in the next eight days, then that starts to wane. What are some things those persons can do to keep themselves motivated? I would say keeping accountable so usually it takes an accountability partner or partners to help and keep another person on track because if it's left just up to an individual and no one is there and no one knows when you slack off or if you miss a day you know it's it's a little bit harder but when you know that other person is there and you know it's almost like oh they're judging me if i don't i have to show up it's like you have to show up you have to show up for yourself um, but it's even more so when you feel like there's this other person, you know, that's going to be aware if you kind of fall down, flake, you know, anything like that. So the that accountability is really important. Uh, also, persons that may be a little bit more self-reliant, they could then perhaps work on like having a diary that they would keep where they can track their own progress. And then that helps as well because then that is encouraging to a person having little milestones along the way, uh, perhaps little rewards and treats that can help as well. And, you know, people love even just the simple things, like even just as simple as it is a certificate, you know, that something that recognizes their accomplishments, you know, even though it's small, any sort of a reward tends to really resonate with a lot of people. Awesome. We're on with Dr. Felicia Adley. And if you haven't already, go ahead and smash that share button. You know how we do and hit that subscribe and like notification bell as well. 
What does success mean to you? Success. Uh, I would say success for me is freedom. It's time freedom, people freedom, and what I would really love to do is just to be able to to work, live my life on my own terms, uh, move to my career, feel fulfilled, and really enjoy working with the particular group uh, that I have identified and just helping them to reach their goals, and then I could feel like I have been successful in life. Wow, that's such an amazing testimony. While we're speaking about testimonials, share one of the encounters, one of your most memorable testimonials with us without having to declare all of the gory details or sensitive information, please. Yes, sure. I would say this was even in in very recent times. Uh, I had a patient that uh, would have posted to one of our social platforms, you know, how I really helped her out uh, when she was having a lot of back pain. And what really touched me the most was that she said that I truly care. You know, and I think that that's something that can be lost, I think, in many different fields, not just the health field, but to feel that somebody really cares about you. It's not just about it's not just a job. It's not just about the money, but like they really care. They really care about your well-being and in this case, also your health. Uh, so that really resonated with me. And she also made a note. And I, I really love that. That's one of my things, uh, per, that personalized care. She made a note that, you know, I will work with you one on one. You know, I work with my patients myself. I don't put them off on somebody else or an assistant or anything like that. I work with them personally, one-on-one. I'm right there. I'm showing that I'm interested in a part of the process with them every step of the way. So I loved it that she was able to identify those things, which are really among some of the core values that I am building Adley Physiotherapy on and my career itself. So I thought that was, that was really great. So I'm the PT that cares. <laughs> The PT that cares. I'm loving it. I'm here for it. Um, Miss Adley, please share with us your contact details and the specific services that people can get in contact with you for. Certainly, uh, people can reach out to me on www.adleyphysio.com. We are on Facebook where I live stream every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern as Adley Physiotherapy. We are on most of the major platforms, including Instagram and YouTube as Adderley Physio. And our services include physiotherapy, of course, and manual lymphatic drainage, uh, personalized exercise plans, and also just lifestyle medicine is what we're really uh working on and into because you're looking at the whole person so no it's not just one thing not just the exercise so we're talking to you about the nutrition we're talking to you about mental and emotional well-being so designing a specific plan for the whole person the whole millennial so those are among some of the many things that we do and i'd be happy to connect with persons on any of those platforms to further discuss Great stuff. Again, if you found any value here today with Dr. Adley, go ahead, smash that share button, hit that notification bell so you can see our new videos pop up your feed. Knowing what you know now, Dr. Adley, is there anything you would have done differently in your profession? No, I don't think so. (laughs) I'm going to tell you the truth. Sometimes I think, oh, maybe I should have waited a little bit longer. But I I just feel like it wasn't my path to follow. I think that it was something that I was meant to just kind of blaze a new trail, even in my youth, Uh, you know, because I started this practice eight, pardon me, yes, four, four years ago. I've been a therapist for eight years. So I was still relatively young at the time. And I would say a lot of persons in my experience in the past would have waited until they were maybe near retirement age or much older before they were going to start a business or a practice like this. But honestly, with regards to my career, no, there isn't really much of anything I would change to tell you quite the honest truth. I think that uh, all of the choices kind of led up to today and will the, the further choices today will lead to my future. So I think that things had to happen the way that they did. Uh, and so I really regret nothing with regards to my career. I think that I'm just where I am meant to be at the appointed time. Good stuff, good stuff. Is there anyone you want to give a shout out to today, Dr. Adley? 
Uh, anyone I want to shout out. I just want to shout out the guy upstairs because I would not be here if it was not for him. I wouldn't have made it this far. And I just thank God for not forgetting about me. And also just shout out to my team, uh, to Miss Evans, to Miss Vandia Williams and my other new hire. She knows who she is. <laughs> Shouts out to the team because I couldn't do, I couldn't make everything happen that happens at Happy Busy without them. And I'm really appreciative and grateful to them. You got me all excited. I think I'm going to do a giveaway. We have three books that we're giving away, actually four books, making it really exciting. It's The Millionaire Next Door by Thomas Stanley, Awaken Giant Within by Tony Robbins. The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene and The Eye of the Needle by myself. You get all four of those books in commemoration of yesterday's World Book Day. So congratulations if you are an author. If you're not and you're an aspiring author, then congratulations to you as well. That's $49.99 US dollars. You know how to get in contact with us. Hit us in the comments or Google Elliot Kelly. You know how to get in contact with us. So thank you so much any words of inspiration for those persons who may probably be at home still um, during this time? Yes, the words would be to hang in there. Uh, I feel that things always get worse before they get better. Um, but if you can just hang in there, hang on and don't let go. Uh, you know, I was at that point as well, you know, when I was kind of coming through and had to come out of school, it was really a time of really devastation for me because I just didn't see how I would get to this bright future that I was able to foresee for myself. But if you hang on, you'd be just amazed at the transformation that your life can make. And just even maybe a year, five years, 10 years, you look back and you're just like, wow, I can't believe I went from that to this. I can't believe this is my life now. So uh, just hold on that the sky is the limit. Uh, what goes, if they say what goes up must come down, but what goes down will come back up as well you know it can't stay down forever so um things will rebound things will get better just hold on and don't let go hold on hold on i love it our topic today was empowering black millennial women today for a healthier tomorrow we had dr adley join us here we have a quick quote um you can't stay here and go where you're going. And that's by Bishop T.D. Jakes. I just love that quote. I'll just say it again. You can't stay here and go where you're going. You've been watching Elliot Kelly TV. Never lose your passion. Hi, my name is Miles Maroon Jr. And you're watching Elliot Kelly TV. Never lose your passion.